Sheet metal was my livelihood, but I never thought I'd be building gear like this. Every week, we turn tons of steel into rolling works of art. Some of the toughest gear in the world comes out of this factory. Building this gear is only half the fun. No one tests like we do. My passion has taken my family to the edges of the earth. Life's a game. We know how to play it. Patriot Games. Welcome to Fink, team. Emotions are running high and there's an excitement in the air as Justin and Tommy receive what can only be described as a true Patriot welcome. on the way down, we smashed it with a shot, but we're here, feet. Oh. Awesome. Thank you, team. How we been going? Everyone been having fun? Oh. That was hardcore. Yeah. Hardcore. We lost comms at 40Ks, so we've been sign language the whole way down. Yeah. We did a belt at 100Ks, had to pull over and change a belt, and then... Hit someone. Someone smashed, the shot. Someone smashed us, but we made it. <laughs> we made it. Hell of a trip. Yeah, we made it. Yeah. What? Thanks, Come guys. Oh. Thanks, Dad. Thank you very much. Woohoo! Yeah. We make it, Tom. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so awesome. That was good. That was just epic. You all, you all got to do it. Everyone needs a razor. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who buys the X1H this weekend gets a razor. <laughs> <laughs> that was on camera. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. Where's my wife? Oh, I love you. Oh. <laughs> so happy. I'm so proud of you. Come here. Good job, come. Coming over the line, it was, um, there's, as we pulled around the corner, you know, the first thing I saw was my old man. I see, I see my dad there waiting for me, and right beside him was my wife and my daughter. Oh, I want to... When I, when I pulled in and I seen Sarah, Mia, my old man, um, all standing there, Belinda was there as well. You know, it's like, um, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know why. I'm not, I'm not generally that much of an emotional person, but just making it into Fink after last year and even the previous year, you know, like uh, those guys at the finish line waiting for me last year, I can't imagine what was going through their heads. Um, I know they're not disappointed with me personally that I didn't finish last year, but I just so badly wanted them to get the experience of seeing me accomplish something that I wanted to do. And, and I think I said it when we pulled up, I don't care if we're in last position, you know? For me, just making it into Fink, that's what this race was all about. All these people out here to see me and, and support me and Tommy and my race team and support Patriot Campers, you know? That's what they're doing, they're out here supporting the business, you know? We throw out a post on social media that we're going to race Fink and, you know, there's something like 50 or 60 people turn up just for us, they are here for us. So crossing that line for me, it was, it was so important to do it. Um, but more to the point, I really want to do it for my wife and my daughter this year, and, and we accomplished it. I was <laughs> sign language in that way. 
when we were, I was up on top of the mountain, I was sort of just sitting there and I'm looking and I'm like, oh, I'm like, Patriot, yelling, Patriot. <laughs> you, you should have seen what we just, we just hit that jump. jump. Yeah. Wide <laughs> open. We're not going any down. faster. We were in the air and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to look good yeah. if we hit that jump so well. Oh. We've just seen Tommy and Justin cross the finish line and they pulled into camp. Justin was emotional, it made Mia and myself cry. We just couldn't contain our excitement. We were jumping up and down, screaming, you know, that, that time when he's just rolling past, the rocks are going, the dust everywhere. It was the best moment. Yes! Oh, you got some work to do on the buggy, but... Oh. I can't believe you're here as well! How did you get here? What the hell? Oh. Well, how did you get here? How did you get here? That was fast. Thank you. Oi. Thank you. We did a belt. We did a belt. We, did we a had belt. to change a belt. Yeah. And, and there's a massive broken. knock coming in there somewhere. We lost comms at 30 k's. So completely lost comms. Sign language. So it was sign language the whole way down, but we're here with mate. Awesome dude, job, I'm telling you right now, cool. that thing is fast. But I cannot take it over 110 k now. As soon as I get over 110 k an hour, belt temp goes belt like 105 temp. straight what do you away. Do, huh? So we got we got to the point we got to the point we had no drive in the belt. So we could only I could only get drive low, and then we just me and him were just like, do we risk it or do we change it? We pulled over, we changed it. We probably we would have we would have got changed in probably I reckon five to six minutes we would have lost, and we got it done. It's got a major knock in the. We thought we did. A shock or something. Right. So we got about 50k out, bang, and I bang, almost huh. almost started crying, man. I'm, I'm like, the race is over. Like, we're done. Yeah. And then it's we just dealt with it. We I thought it was a shock, but we dealt with it. And we kept pushing harder and harder and harder. And as I got faster, yeah, it kind of went away. Crushed it. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Bring it in, yo. Thank you. So good. <laughs> good to be here. Really good to be here. Thank you, boys. Oh yes. Who needs your Red Bull? Yeah. Cheers, man. 100% this race is all about strategy. You know, you, you can't just jump in a race car at Fink and mash the gas and, and hope that you're going to make it down to Fink. You have to have a strategy. The past two years, we've learnt so much about this race, you know? Keeping the belt temperature down, keeping the revs down, preserving the car, you got to race strategic, you know? We had, we had a big team meeting last night with me, Tommy, Dave and Kirby and, and the boys just drummed it into my head, you know? It's all about strategy, man. you got to get down to Fink. So really, Pulling over and changing that belt, in hindsight, now we're here in Fink, it's, it's probably one of the smartest calls that we made for the race. As the pit crew start reviewing the race buggy to identify any repairs that are needed, the rest of Camp Patriot soaks in the last of the sun. That's there done. Tomorrow will be all about making it back. It's such a great atmosphere, like everyone's like a family, like, you know, it's just the, um, the amount of people that talk about how great Patriot campers are, and it's just such a nice feeling. Well, the atmosphere today has just been surreal. Since Justin made it over the line, um, you know, I think we're all sort of sitting here, um, just hanging, 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 hanging. And then to see him roll through, car was in good nick, everything looked good, no squeaks, no scratches, it just... And yeah, since then the morale's just been through the roof. Fantastic. Excellent day. All enjoying it then? Yeah, absolutely. Very That's why we're back here next year, mate. <laughs> you coming back? <laughs> absolutely. I like it. Lee's already booked in, my friend. Don't I worry. feel like we've already got the 20 cars that are here this year. Yeah, they're booking year. in, they're coming in next year. Yeah. Yeah. So do you reckon we can do 100 next year? Give it's it going to be tough. We'll give it a yeah. crack. Yeah, I feel absolutely. like we're going to have to break the convoy up a little bit because I reckon, 100 yes. cars, I think the last car, the last vehicle will be leaving Alice as we're getting, we're getting in. in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
The car now is not uh, obviously brand new anymore. It's done 230 really hard kilometres and we're getting a lot of slack through the drive line now. So they put me back in the car just to make sure that uh, it feels all right. We had suspicions of possibly a front diff, but that hasn't uh, ended up being the case. Um, all in all, it's, it's looking really good. The build's been absolutely perfect. There's quite a few changes that we want to make back uh, at the factory for the next race, but it's going to be a full nut and bolt, and um, tomorrow we're, just, we're going to send it. Day one of the Fink Desert race has been a cracker. Settle in for an early night, boys. You'll need to be fully ready to send this thing tomorrow and claw back some track from the competition. The sun is rising over Camp Patriot after a night of must-have repairs, and the team is eager to start the final leg of the race, heading back to Alice Springs. Day two is probably a little bit more nerve-wracking than day one, and again, the position that we're sitting in, you know, we came in quite well yesterday, and we do have something to prove. You know, we've got the whole Patriot family, the team. So today, uh, the pressure is really on. Day two is, uh, is so nerve-wracking. You know, when you get there uh, and you're in a good position, um, it's all about getting home to Alice, and it's just you and me. Mm. Everyone's left, you know, from us. It's, it's you and me all the way home, and, and to, to make it there so everyone can see us. And for me, it's very, very, very nerve-wracking. Tire pressure's are reading? Yeah. Here we go. The expectations for the start of the race, we've known from previous years it's going to be a dust bowl. You know, they're starting the cars 30 seconds or a minute apart. We're sitting midfield. Um, this is what Fink is dishing up to us this morning and, and we're going to have to drive to these conditions. Um, we've just got to work with what we got. Portion here. Where is it? Just so this ridge. Yep, got it. All right, so that's fine. No one else can see. Remember that. Yep. What's our belt, Tim? 65. After changing a belt yesterday, we weren't going to risk that again today, so we made the decision last night, remove all the filtration uh, prior to the clutch cover, and so far, it seems to be working. Right hand are coming up. 70 on the belt, Tim. Got it. Left hander. Early start of the race, you know, you've got the sun at that level where the dust is amplified. You know, it's dusty and then the sun's shining through it. It's almost impossible. 83 on the belt, Tim. Got it. Right hander. Where is it? This way. Portion. Portion could be a creek bed. Soft, very soft. Very soft. 86 on the belt, Tim, still. Just cruising like this. This is good. Keep it right. Left hander coming up over a ridge. Right hand are coming up. Oh, that's so soft, dude. How's that belt looking? 91. Yeah, it's going to get up there, mate. Our arch nemesis so far from what we know of Fink is the, the soft sand and the top end, the high speed run. So if our belt temperature doesn't get out of control into this first section of soft sand, well, I think we're going to have a good run home. Belt temp? 82. Awesome, mate. That's working, eh? Yeah, that is. That belt's staying cold, dude. That's it. 210 miles. The right hand to come up. With our confidence now in the car, uh, we start pushing it a little bit harder, but there's, there's one thing that gets to me more than anything else at Fink, and you know what that is. That's a dust trail in front of me. It is like a bull to a red rag, and it doesn't matter what Tommy says, I don't hear anything, I don't see anything. When I see a dust trail in front of me, all I want to do is hunt that guy down. Okay. Yeah. If you get his number, just let him know we're behind him. 86 on the belt, Tim. 657. It's our race, don't crash out. No, no, we got it, I got it. 
As much as I like to keep Justin calm, there's nothing better than when he sees that dust trail because I know we're heading for him and we're going to get him. 651. 651 coming through. Okay, no race still though, mate. Yeah, mate. Eight I've got six it. on the belt, Tim. We're just cruising, Tom. All right, please, you, please, you're just cruising, buddy. Let We're me. just cruising, dude. Six one nine coming through. Six one nine coming through. Yeah, bring it around, mate. Bring it around. Thanks, buddy. At this point in time, the car is feeling absolutely amazing and we are tearing this track up. But the noise is back. Mm. And what is it? I've got no trust in my steering, eh? No. Right hand are coming up. Right hand are coming up. Where are we? Where are we? Head right. It was right. Where's the track? It is right. That's the track there. We're on the track. We're on the track. The team are almost at the halfway point and they're passing competitor after competitor, clawing their way up the ranks as Justin pushes the race buggy harder and harder. I think that was a belt slip. Huh? I think that was just a belt slip. All right, 91. Where are we at, 91? Yeah. Let's cool this thing right down, mate. Watch our mirrors. I'm watching them. We're coming up on the halfway point and we're doing everything right. The car is feeling good. We're nursing the belt while still pushing it that little bit harder because we've got a little bit more confidence. And I don't know right now whether my mind's starting to play tricks on me because the fatigue's setting in, but I'm feeling like the belt is starting to slip. Yeah, that's belt slipping, dude. Oh, but What we don't know right now is that noise. The worst has happened. We're currently in rear wheel drive. That knock's getting bad in the back. Yeah. Real bad. Yeah, mate. We're just going to keep going to brakes. Find your rhythm, it's our race. Now the car's starting to do some really, really weird stuff and we don't actually know what the cause is still. We still don't know that we're in rear wheel drive, but what's starting to happen right now is we're so focused on what we think, or we're convinced the problem is. We think it's the belt slipping. And we kind of disregard the fact that the car's not steering right anymore. We can't hold a direction over the top of the whoops. I'm starting to lose the tail into the corners. And the knock that we think is coming from the back, it's not. It's actually coming from the front of the car. It's reverbing through the chassis. We're thinking rear drive shaft or the shock mount or something along those lines. Our diagnosis of what's going on in the car at the moment couldn't be further away from what is actually the problem, but we have no choice. We're gonna push until we break something or we make it home to think. I don't think our suspension's working. No, man, something's, something's not right, eh? At all. I feel, I feel like a rag doll. Yeah, I wonder if we've done that rear shock, mate. Yeah, right hander. We're f***ing all over the joint. Mate, we are f***ing It's been almost two hours of hard out racing. The knock in the rear end hasn't slowed them down yet but their luck is about to run out. We really don't know what's going on. You know, is it suspension? Is it the steering? Is it the belt? You know, my vision in my head is that there's things hanging off the car and it's only a matter of time before something lets go and it's the end of the race. How many k's out are we, mate? Mate, we're not far now, we're in deep well. We've done deep well. Finally, we figured it out. We know exactly what the problem is and what's going on with the car. We've blown the front diff. We're running in rear wheel drive. Left hand to half. 96. We've exited out of the berm at lower speed than we've been running previously in the race, and the car just stepped out and we knew straight away. Front diff's gone. We're running in rear wheel drive. We've been looking in all the wrong areas. We've got to get this car home. Hold together, babe. We're in. Dude, uh -huh. we're, we're in rear wheel drive. I'm finding it so hard to steer this thing, dude. Oh, no, mate. Just reserve the car. For the last 100 kilometres or so, the boys have known that something was wrong in the rear of the buggy. They just didn't know what. That knock we've been hearing, well, that's the front drive shaft contacting the suspension under full compression, which has blown the front diff in the buggy. We're 45 minutes away. OK, copy that. 
Hang on to mate, preserve that car. Yep. Got we it. Go. We, I don't want to finish now. We've well, been trying to reset the power steering, hoping it'll re-engage front wheel drive. Yeah. But it's just, mate, I'm sliding all over the joint, eh? I know, just to preserve the car then, mate. We've got no one else in front of us. This guy's not going to catch us. Yep. Let's just preserve the car, mate. Run at 70%. Copy that. Don't hit a tree. Do not hit a tree. I repeat, do not hit the trees. Copy that. Do not hit a tree. OK, good. We're all on the same page. The team is on the final straight. With the first cars and trucks arriving at the finish line, the Patriot family is eagerly awaiting buggy 6A day. With 10 kilometres to go, it's feeling pretty good. I know we're going to get home. It's just only a matter of time. Uh, we've got a clear track in front of us. you just got to get us there. It's not going to be like yesterday, though. We're in rear wheel drive. When we come into that stadium, we're not putting this thing on its lid. <laughs> I'm, going to ba I'm going to baby this car the last 10 k's. We're going to cross that finish line. That's it. The feeling coming into that stadium is like absolutely nothing you could explain to anyone. Yeah, you see, it's still months, months and months and years later, you remember every time you cross the finish line at Fink. You forget all of the late nights. You forget the effort that the, the team puts into it. Uh, you forget all the excuses that you make during the race as to why you didn't get on the podium or why you didn't get the place that you wanted. Yeah. And all of that goes out the window when you're coming into the stadium, you see the finish line, and it's just this overwhelming sense of accomplishment, isn't it? And that's exactly what keeps you coming back. They've done it. After the disappointment of last year, the team has made it there and back in record time. And the victory is only sweeter with all the support from Camp Patriot. There and back, baby. Back. Watching that new razor come across the line looked absolutely awesome. Right. Yes. I feel like I actually ran the race myself. I'm so excited, so pumped. It's an it's incredible feeling. Can't describe it. As a father, seen him come through. Yes, you've done it. Oh, well done, Sam. back. Same, Where's my pit crew? Are they here or not? Thank you, darling. We've driven back from Fink and we made it just in time to see the boys roll through. The look on their faces and the excitement and the car intact get better than that. What a ride, brother. Oh, hey. Welcome to Alice. Yes. Hey. Thanks. Oh, I don't even know what to say. Oh. The feeling standing here this year is completely different to last year. We were waiting, we got the news last year that the boys had uh, come off the track and weren't, weren't continuing the race. This year, as we see them come around the last corner, uh, you cannot explain how we're all feeling here. It's absolutely crazy. Top 10, top 10. How do you like them, Apple? Uh, <laughs> how good is this? Like, um, to come in top 10, it started in 28, 48 cars in our position, in our, in our class. As these guys running through my head. The whole way home, man, Tommy is just talking about, you know, how many people you got waiting for you just get the car home. And I think that's half the reason we got it home. Thanks. Thank you. What a race. I mean, starting off eight o'clock this morning and being here now two, two and a half hours later, I think, you know, that was probably one of the, the hardest drives we've ever had. And we lost comms again. Um, we had crazy knots going on, but, you know, we, we held the car together. Um, we got it, got it right, and we just we took it home, you know. And I tell you what, the last 30 k's felt like 100. It was just keeping it together. And every bump, you just kind of, you know, cringed as to what the cars do, you know. Knowing we lost full drive and we'd been two wheel drive for a long time, you know, it was it was hard. But we're here. Can't believe it. I'm on top of the world. I I couldn't honestly couldn't be happier. I'm lost for words. I've spent all morning chasing these boys down that service road, not uh, knowing that I'm 10 minutes behind, but not knowing if they're okay, not knowing if they've made it. You can't see them the whole time. And then to, to arrive here, not know the results, just come running up looking for Justin and Tommy and seeing the further I look up the line, the further I see 688. They've made it. They've made a sick time. Top 10, I'm, I'm on top of the world. Justin and Tommy's class started with 48 competitors. 
and of those, only 32 cars completed the journey there and back. And despite the drama, the belt changes and the long journey here, Justin and Tommy managed to snag eighth place. We really couldn't have asked for more. Well, maybe a podium spot, but we'll save that for next year. Oh, this is just going to cement uh, Patriot Campers uh, at Fink, you know, this is an annual. This is something that we will do for as long as I can possibly do it, but I'm really looking forward to handing over the keys, you know, passing it over to the, to the twins uh, when the time's right, and this will be something our family will be doing, I'm pretty sure, for the rest of our lives. Next time on Patriot Games. The crew are starting their long haul journey to the home of Genghis Khan, Mongolia. And Justin and Sarah finally lay eyes on Patriot Campers Mongolia in person for the first time. But the building isn't complete yet and there's a lot of work that needs to be done before the open day and time is running out.